Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, it's interesting that I'm in a building that I designed many, many years ago, and it uh, was called American Zinc Building, and actually the park service was responsible for helping preserve it. At one time, this building and the older building that the hotel is in was slated to be torn down, but Esley Hamilton and others in the city uh, fought to preserve it, and so it was saved. And uh, um, Ray Whitcoff was the owner of the prop of the Fur Exchange building, the older building, and he got this smaller lot on the corner, and he asked me to design a headquarters for American Zinc Company, and uh, and. Uh, site is about uh, 60 foot wide by, by 170 foot long. And so uh, <clears throat> what I did was to put all of the fixed element, the stairways, the elevators on the north side, and I could have a clear span of 50 feet uh, within the uh, site and this is the main uh, ground level. Now the, I think it's wonderful to preserve a building like this, uh, but also I think that the people that um, then remodel it ought to have some sensitivity. But I don't think they really did. You could see that some <laughs> additions that they put on on the end and so forth. But anyway, so it was a really clear span of 60 feet by about 110 feet and all the fixed elements on one side. So the office space was wide open and I think these were all this sort of traditional stuff was added on once the hotel took it over. But it used to be just a beautiful open space. Um, I wanted to use zinc as an exterior material because it was their headquarters, but zinc was not available as a building material at that time, and so I went to stainless steel. Uh, and you could see that the uh, facade uh, on one side is a Virendale truss. The whole block is a Virendale truss, so you have that... Uh, a uh, free span coming over. That shows again the Virendale Trust and then the open span and then the Fur Exchange building to the back. And this is a, a front that shows the clear span of uh, uh, 50 feet and then the coming under protected to the main entrance. The next few slides I'm going to talk about, uh, in the 60s, there were some very interesting concrete buildings done. And concrete was, we were able to use concrete because it was, when you build concrete structure, you have to build another structure, wooden structure, to pour the uh, shell over it. And so, uh, the cost, the labor cost was still such that you could afford concrete structures. But um, now it's really much more difficult to do. This is the airport that Yamasaki and I did for St. Louis Lambert Airport. And at the beginning, there were three uh, arches, 120 by 120 foot wide. Uh, this is an older drawing, but each of those spaces were 120 by 120. And then uh, this shows the, uh, another uh, bay was added, and recently, this is a fairly recent picture, but the tornado several years ago took away a lot of the copper roof, and so the, 
this is all new copper roof on the building. And you notice those uh, beams going diagonally across the, uh, <coughs> that uh, area. Uh, Yamo and I really didn't want those beams, but the structural engineers said that we needed those for structure. And later on, he admitted that he could have eliminated them by making the corner where the arches come together, thickening it, which I did on one of the buildings I'll show you next. A clear span. Uh, Yama's idea was to try to make this building a, like a Grand Central Station gateway to St. Louis. This is a planetarium, another concrete structure that was built during that period. And it's a thin shell concrete. And the reason for this form was there was a planetarium inside, and then there was a stairway that wrapped around that planetarium. And you could go up to the roof, and from the roof, after the show, actually see the stars. But they've, uh, re uh, they've remodeled it now so that the whole interior is quite different than the way it was designed. This is the um, Priory Chapel. I think you're going to go visit. But uh, this was built for Benedictine monks who came from England to set up a, a boys secondary school in St. Louis. And they wanted a round church because they felt that it would bring all the boys much closer to the center and they could pay more attention to that. <laughs> uh, that's the section through the first arch is the main nave, the second arch is the sanctuary. And then the bell tower is at the top. And the bell tower is a Benedictine uh, uh, building uh, element that they've used in many of their buildings. When you build a concrete thin shell structure, you have to build a whole uh, structure out of wood. Uh, and, and there were four sections that they moved around it was interesting when we put out the, the, made the drawings and put it out to bid, almost no contractor wanted to build it because it was too difficult, they said. In fact, McCarthy brothers who got the bid, the elder brother who was the head of the company threw the working drawings in the wastebasket. <laughs> and then uh, his brother, Patty, picked it up and really researched it and figured out how he could build it. And uh, so he was responsible for getting built. I mean, architects can do innovative design, but you also need contractors who are willing to take the chance to build it. And that shows uh, the thin concrete Thank you.